Okay, so here is an enzyme pro problem in which you're actually going to get to use the y equals mx plus b formula to uh, calculate the km and the vmax, okay? So, what I'm going to do here is just start by reading it and then we'll start working on it. Tyrosine, uh, tyrosinase, okay, the tyrosinase enzyme catalyzes reactions that produce brown colored products such as melanin in the skin or the browning observed in apples exposed to the air. Food scientists interested in preventing the browning process in plant-based foods uh, have shown that dodosol gallate, I don't even know what that is, but <laughs> it's not that important for the problem here, is the inhibitor of tyrosinase. Okay, it's an inhibitor. We know it's some kind of an inhibitor. We don't know if it's a competitive, uncompetitive, non-competitive, we just know that it's an inhibitor. Sketch the line weaver Burke plot, okay, for the enzymes in the presence and absence of inhibitor and report the volume and report the volume for the table below. Okay? Alright, so the first thing they want us to do is calculate the Vmax for no inhibitor. And then and we have this equation here, y equals 1.52 x plus 1.51. So what I want to do is I want to just recall what these things are on the line weaver burke plot. So let's just draw the, the basic axis here. I just want to kind of just recall what these things are, okay? So we're not confused. So this is 1 over V. This is 1 over S, right? And if we recall right, the Y-intercept is the Vmax, or 1 over Vmax. And the X-intercept, which is going to be somewhere over here, is negative 1 over Km, okay? So if I have this equation here with for no inhibitor, so I'll write no inhibitor. So no inhibitor, right? And I have this equation, it says y equals 1.52x plus 1.51, right? Okay. Not a terribly difficult equation. So if I want the y-intercept, I want to know where this crosses the y-axis. Well, all I have to do is set x equal to zero. So if x is equal to 0, then that tells me that y is equal to 1.52 times 0 plus 1.51. So y is equal to 1.51, right? Now, you may be saying, okay, that's the answer. That's our y-intercept. Right, that is your y-intercept. But that's not your vmax, and that's why this is kind of a tricky problem. Because remember, it's actually the 1 over the Vmax. So I have to do 1 divided by 1.51. So I actually have to do 1 in order to get the Vmax. In order to get the Vmax, I have to say it's equal to 1 divided by 1.51. Okay, 1 divided by 1.51. And if I do that, I get the Vmax is equal to 0. 662. Okay, so up here under Vmax, I'm going to write 0 0.662. Okay, uh, let's get that on there. 0 0.662, that's the Vmax for no inhibitor. Now, if I wanted to do, use the same equation, I wanted to get the x in intercept because the x intercept corresponds to the km, all I'd have to do is set y equal to 0. Okay, so if I set y equal to 0, right? I'll set y equal to zero. Let's just, I'll do it out on paper here. I don't have a whole lot of space, so I'm going to try and make this work. So y is equal to zero is equal to 1.52x plus 1.51, right? So I'm going to subtract 1.51 from both sides, and I'm going to be left with 1.52x, and I'm going to say x is equal to negative 1.51 divided by 1.52 and I get something like this, negative 0 0.993, okay? And it's a negative number, but that's what we want because in order to get the Km, so the Km is now equal to 1 over negative 0 0.993, okay? So the Km is equal to 1 divided, or rather, actually, I'm even making a silly mistake here, this should be negative, remember, because over here it's going to be negative, where the KM, where this is going to cross the x-axis is in the negative x. 
is in the negative x position, so it should be negative 1 divided by a negative 0.993, right? That's, that's what we got. And we get roughly that that answer is about 1.01. 1 .01. So the Km is 1.01, .01, okay? So now we have the Vmax and the Km. So we found the two values for that. Now, they want us to also find those same values for the inhibitor, or when inhibitor is added. Okay, well, I'm not going to do uh, the whole algebraic calculation over here. I'm just going to say what the Vmax is, okay? Now, remember, to get the Vmax, we have to do 1 divided by, now if we look at the equation here, it's 1.58x plus 4.27. So, if we set x equal to 0, the y-intercept is 4.27. If I do 1 divided by 4.27, I end up with 0 0.234. So 0 0.234, okay? And, all right, uh, you know what? Maybe I'm just going to show this real quick. So y is equal to 1.58x, because I want everybody to be clear about this. This was something that I found you know, somewhat difficult to uh, think about initially when I was first in the class. So if that's equal to 0, so 1.580 is equal to 4.27, so y is equal to 4.27. Now if we recall, going back over here, I said the Vmax is actually what the answer we actually got was 1 over Vmax. If we want the Vmax, we need to divide the answer by 1, okay, or, or divide the answer into 1. So if we get this 4.27, simply do just like that. 1 divided by 4.27, you get 0.234. Okay? Now, same thing with x over here. We set x equals, uh, we set y equal to 0. We subtract 4.27 from both sides. And what we end up with is negative 4.27. So negative 4.27 divided by 1.58. And that gives us this value. Okay, but the trouble is this is not the right answer, so we need to do 1 divided by negative 0 0.270, and we get negative 0 0.370, okay? So that's going to be, again, making the same mistake here, it, it should be negative 1 divided by the value we had there. So if it's negative 1 divided by the value we had there, it's actually going to be 0 0.370. So, excuse me, even I'm confused. But I, I think we'll get through it. Okay, so I have those values, right? I have my Vmax, I have my Km for both of those things. Now I can plot those on the graph that I drew over here. Although they're getting a little messy, I can kind of plot those and I, and I, and I know where they are. So if I want to plot the no inhibitor first, the Vmax is 0 0.662, but that's not the value I want to plot, right? The value I want to plot is the 1.51. So if we just sort of say, okay, here's 1, so here's 2, so 1.51 is right there, okay, I plot that point right there. This is not to scale, so please, you know, don't, don't quote me on this stuff. This is not to scale, it's just a rough... Um, graph. I don't have graph paper or anything. And our x value was negative 0.993. So that's very, very close to 1. So we'll say here's 1, right? Here's 1, or negative 1 rather. If I can keep my axis straight, that's negative 1 right there. Okay. And so this is like right here. So this thing looks like this, okay? Roughly speaking. Okay. So this is no inhibitor. Okay? So that's no inhibitor. Now, the next graph here, for the next one, for the one with the inhibitor, we see that the y value is equal to 4.27. Okay? So 1, 2, 3, 4, here's roughly the value up there. Okay, right? 4.27. And what was that Vmax? It was negative 1. So what was it? It was negative 4.27 divided by 1.58. And that was negative 1. So it was, it was 
negative 0 0.270 okay so this is going to wind up getting shifted over here so there's negative 1 here's negative 2 here's roughly negative 2.70 so this graph is going to look something like that okay and this is with inhibitor okay so that's with the inhibitor and remember this is negative 1 over km and this is 1 over v max okay 1 over v max so we can label the points on the graph 1 over v max uh, negative 1 over km right there we go everything is labeled on the graph and we're, and we're pretty much all done with with this that's all we had to do we had to fill in the table here and we had to draw the graph now the next part of the question if I have enough time to finish I hope I do says what type of inhibitor is dodecyl gallate um, justify your response and explain what this tells us about the mode of in of inhibitor binding okay well let's look at it from this graph we know one thing it's not competitive inhibition and why because they don't have the same Vmax in order for this to be competitive they have to have the same Vmax right so it is a smaller V it actually has a smaller Vmax here okay with the inhibitor so which rules out competitive inhibition and since no amount of substrate can fully overcome the effects of the inhibitor so the km is also smaller okay notice we're going further in the negative direction so that's going to mean this is going to be smaller okay um, because a larger number over over uh, over one is going to give us a smaller number okay a larger number or one divided by a larger number is going to give us a smaller number okay so it's smaller and the substrate appears to have a greater affinity for the enzyme so this is consistent with an inhibitor that binds the enzyme substrate complex and now think for a second what which one of these types of inhibition that I talked about binds the enzyme substrate complex uh, and prevents the enzyme from releasing substrate and continuing the reaction to make product well if you remember from the previous videos it's on competitive it's on competitive inhibition okay it's on competitive inhibition that's the answer here and I, I pretty much justified why by saying what I just said over there I said that the Vmax is smaller okay and that's one of the characteristics of on competitive inhibition this is binding to the enzyme substrate complex okay it's not binding to it's not binding to the active site so it's not competitive inhibition it's binding to some other site changing the conformation okay it's binding to some other other side it's binding to the enzyme substrate complex and changing what's going on there preventing it from continuing the reaction um, there's another thing you might notice I never talked about okay you would notice that these and these actually